Hey jazz heads, long time no see. Small absence from the vlog recently. I've been really busy doing all sorts of reasonably mundane tasks, which won't be of that much interest to you. I've been on quite a few corporate gigs as well recently, which I don't normally do, but excitingly I decided I'm gonna try and record my septet later on this year. So got to raise the funds for that somehow. So I've been taking a few corporate gigs lately. Again, of which will surely not be that interesting for the likes of yourselves. I've got a few exciting things coming up over the next fortnight or two. So you'll be coming along to all of that. Um, but today I thought I would take you through my trumpet warm up. So I'm at the start of my playing day. I haven't played a note yet today. So I'm gonna show you what I do to warm up. Uh, and hopefully it gives you a few good ideas brass players, trumpet players especially, but there may be some things in here that even those of you who are not brass players may find interesting to add to your warm-ups. So the first thing that I do is I play kind of like a mini Bill Adam routine. So I'll play myself a nice F. So now I've got the pitch. I'm gonna take my lead pipe off, I'm gonna take my tuning slide off, and I'm just gonna buzz the lead pipe on that pitch. So I really like doing that. Um, I've never been a fan of mouthpiece buzzing, because I feel like when I buzz the mouthpiece, I close up my embouchure. I feel like I force the <laughs> rather than actually when you think what we're actually doing when we play, we have a nice flow of air. Uh, and I just feel that little bit more resistance from the lead pipe helps with that. Um, and actually I've done that for 30 seconds or so and I already feel quite warmed up. Uh, well, the very next thing I'm going to do is work with a metronome and I'm going to do the Caruso six notes. Slightly in my own way in that again I'm going to do it um, from F sharp to lower sharp and higher sharp expanding again in a Bill Adam kind of way. So they're all minims, two minims and one semi-brief, which is obviously two minims added together. And if you're gonna do it properly, the six notes includes a breath in and a breath out. So you've got six minims. I'm gonna go on like that for a little while now, just trying to make a really nice sound and make sure every note's solid and secure. Uh, and then I'm gonna see what needs fixing after that. So I should say, I've got my metronome set to 30. And also while I'm doing this, I am subdividing these beats all the way into semiquavers. One e and a, two e and a, three e and a, four e and a. 
And I'm doing that the whole time when I'm playing. <laughs> So there we go, that's my six notes done. Uh, I feel a little bit looser now, and I feel like I've got a good tone going on. Uh, one thing I felt whilst I was doing that was that I perhaps could have been a little bit tighter in my corners today. I don't know whether that's to do with my air yet, or whether that's just, just the way that my chops are gonna be setting up today. But anyway, to fix that, I'm gonna bring my corners forward a little bit and tighten them up. I'm gonna do a really, really, uh, nice drill that I like doing when I feel like that's something I want to address uh, in my warm-up. To do this we're going to use some pitch bends um, again in a Caruso style but using Schlossberg number six. So we've doubled the metronome this time. Number six originally goes like this uh, from the middle line. So it has a semitone bend, okay? Uh, well, a semitone movement. We're going to play it this time as a bend. So I'm going to go from G to F sharp without pushing a valve down. And when I bend back up to that G, I really feel like my corners come in and forward and my tone is a lot purer on that second G. So I'm just gonna do that for a little while. I'm gonna go down one octave. Maybe if you watch my corners, you might see the move, you might see what I'm talking about. Okay, so we got to the end of that. Uh, I'm now going to do the same thing, same thing, but I'm going to do reverse bends. Um, they're not quite what the name I've given them describes, I suppose. So I'm going to use the same basic minim pattern or half note pattern, uh, but this time, so if I stay on that same G, I'm going to try and finger G, A flat. So I'm going to finger that, but I'm going to try and stay on the G. And then the same going down. I'm going to keep going down. Right, so we got to the bottom of there, um, and I feel... I feel like I'm making a really nice sound now. I feel really warm. Um, so I'm ready to kind of do some things a little bit more technical. This is still, I think, part of my warm up because I'm not really working on anything. I'm still at the problem fixing stage, perhaps, or just the getting into things phase. So something that I will do regularly if I feel like 
I'm not connected up between airflow and fingers is uh, the Clark number one exercise. But today, that kind of seems to be working for me a little bit. I feel like that bit's okay. So I'm not going to do much of that today. Um, so many other things I do that might be of interest to you jazz musicians out there, not necessarily just you brass players, if you manage to stick it out this long. If I feel like intonation is something that I want to work on, I'll do an exercise with a drone. So I'll quite often start up what uh, is known as a Struti box, although mine is on an app so it doesn't actually run down from charge and change pitch, it stays pretty constant. We just get a nice drone. play about with that uh, just really getting everything connected up or I'll do a little triad pair exercise using minor arpeggios so uh, that was in the key of uh, my A so we could do A minor and B minor together So the A in there is not speed, it's intonation and actually trying to be musical with it as well, try and make some phrases like you would do when you're improvising. Uh, well, we kind of are improvising anyway, so like you are improvising. In case you hadn't worked out already, this kind of bit of the warm up, the la this is the last thing I'll do before I kind of move on to whatever I want to work on. Um, so this is kind of in a bit of a rotation and it's just got lots of things that I work on uh, regularly uh, that just keep everything in shape which you have to do when you play a brass instrument um can't just rock up and blow on it you've got to keep everything the first thing you've got to do is keep your fundamentals going and then you can then start to try and improve your jazz playing maybe you want to try some of these um hopefully that'll be some use to someone out there um it's been a while since i've done a lesson video so i know you guys really like the lesson videos as well so i'm going to try and keep doing them um, any questions or any ideas for um, lesson videos, then shout them out and I'll try and cover them. Other exciting things that are happening soon. I'm doing a workshop day with my Hearts Youth Jazz Ensemble and we're combining with the National Youth Jazz Orchestra uh, in a couple of weeks on Sunday the 22nd. So A, if you are in the London or Hertfordshire area, it's free to come along to. Um, drop me a message and I will send you the link where you can sign up to come along and join us on that day. As long as you are of secondary school age, uh, 11 to 18, um, then you are welcome to come along. The day after, really exciting, the day after, my septet is back out again and we are at uh, London's iconic jazz venue, The Bull's Head. Um, that's Monday the 23rd. Uh, there'll be a ticket link in the description. So. If you haven't caught us yet or you want to come and catch us again, then come out and see us on the 23rd. Then later on that week, on the 26th, I'm back with my Youth Jazz Orchestra uh, and we are doing a whole Charles Mingus concert in St Albans as well. Some details of that will be on my website. If you want to come along and support a local music service and see some Mingus by some great young players, then get out and see that. And then the weekend after that, I will be down in Somerset with the Denmark Street Big Band. So hopefully see you around some of those gigs at some point. If not, hope the lesson was useful and I'll catch you next time.